Do you ever think Sunderland is a gloomy, depressing place with no history? Well, think again, because today we're exploring Southwick, an area of North Sunderland which often gets a bad reputation, but has a surprising amount of history. From a World War I plane crash to an interesting link to Lewis Carroll in Alice in Wonderland, Southwick is full of historical stories that I'm excited to share. We're exploring Southwick Green today, an area that has been at the heart of the community since the original settlement. Originally farm cottages would have lined this northeast corner of the green, being built for workers nearby. This rural village green began to suffer from industrialism in the mid 1800s, with it being nicknamed the Village Black. The Bishop of Durham, on a visit to Southwick in 1872, asked, What is that place like a dung heap in the centre of the village? Robert Thompson had to reply that that was the Village Green. It wasn't until 1880 that the green was transformed with wooden railings and a park. It's so interesting to think that these shopping units used to be vast cottages. Most of them were demolished to make way for the Savoy Theatre. However, the 18th century cottage number 40 to 42 still stands today as the former Mason's Amusements. What I love about old photographs of South of Green is that literally everything was in one place, from work to play. This section is where the Edwardian Savoy Electric Theatre was, a place for Sudikers to listen to music and enjoy shows and escape their everyday life for just an hour or two. The Savoy Electric Theatre was built in 1912 on the design of Joseph Pott and Sons and built by Messrs Gallagher and McEwen. 812 people could fit into the downstairs and circle upstairs seating, with a stage, orchestra space and even two shops on each side of the entrance for snacks. This newspaper story from the Evening Chronicle on the 30th of August 1939, where an ice cream refrigerating machine took fire within the Savoy. Flames destroyed all the ice cream and damaged the apparatus, with the fire being extinguished with a hand pump. The cinema closed in March 1959, with the last picture shown being the man in the grey flannel suit, featuring Gregory Peck. It was then a place for people to gather for dancing and bingo, before it was sadly burnt down in 2017 and has sat like this ever since. We're heading now towards the end of Southwood Green to see our next historic gem that was hoped to help with the problems of alcohol abuse in Victorian Southwick. This was the Coffee Tavern which opened in 1883 as an alternative to public houses, selling meals and snacks in an environment where the consumption of alcohol was forbidden. There was also social entertainment and reading rooms to lure those away from the demon drink. Just along from the coffee tavern is a link to our past with Scotland. According to folklore, Scots Bank got its name from the Scottish army that marched through Southwick village on their way to confront the Royalists during the Civil War of 1644. I can't quite picture burly Scottish soldiers marching their way through this peaceful bit of Southwick, but stranger things have happened in Sunderland. Did you know that Southwick Green was proposed to be tarred over? 
Hot Edwardian summers left the green derelict and dusty, so the Highways Committee proposed to tar over the green in 1909. Travel and showmen set up camp on the green too, heightening the problems for the residents. The sons of Leeds and Southwick shipbuilder Robert Thompson paid for the green to be laid out as a memorial to their father, with the memorial standing in the centre, commemorating Robert Thompson's life. Seats were originally located on either side of the memorial, within the park as the residents called it. One of the sides of the memorial features the Thompson family crest, alongside the motto, while I breathe I hope. Another side has an image of the great man that had served the Southwick authority for over 35 years. The Russell buildings were built in 1903 as part of Southwick's expansion to satisfy the needs of the fast grown community. Local architects brought a beautiful decorative style to this up and coming little village. On the wall next to Herons are some really lovely old photographs showing the change in Southwick and the village green from the 1900s to today. Did you know that Southwick is actually a thousand years old? Southwick has been through a lot of changes in its time, from tiny fish and hamlet to modern suburb. We're now at a part of Southwick Green which is largely unchanged from the old Edwardian photographs with the old post office building and the tram car in being instantly recognisable. signed by the Southwick Village Green Preservation Society, bringing some of the incredible stories of this part of Sunderland to life. When Southwick's population grew, so did the number of beer houses. The draw of cheap alcohol provided people with the distraction from dreary industrial life in the mines and shipyards. With it being a Southwick tradition to overindulge in the public houses, did you know that by the 1890s, there was 26 public houses in Southwick alone? The Tramcar Inn has been a prominent place for a pint since the 18th century, with this building being extended outwards in 1906. It was originally meant to be a single storey like the post office next door, but instead a design by H.T.D. Headley was put forward with an ornate front. Glazed yellow and brown tiles alongside Art Nouveau lettering evoke the Edwardian style heyday. The Tramcar Inn was likely named after the new invention of the tram, being a pit stop for those on journeys to town and beyond. <laughs> This beautiful former Sunderland Cooperative Society building holds a sad secret, a World War I aeroplane crash killing five people. On Thursday the 24th of May 1917, 19-year-old Lieutenant Philip Thompson took off from nearby Usworth Aerodrome in a biplane to test the newly fitted gun. He passed over the green at Southwick and bemused by a large crowd flew down low to see what was happening. An open air meeting had been organised by the local war savings committee to encourage people to be more careful with their food consumption during this crucial stage of World War I. The people of Southwick were not used to seeing such a rare sight, so delighted in the two swoops of the plane before it flew off towards the sea. 20 minutes later, Philip was on his way back to base and travelling low over the grain. Whilst going at speeds of 105 miles per hour, the sun was low and shone in his eyes, so he didn't see the 56 foot flagstaff in the centre of the green, which collided with the aeroplane. The left wing was broken on impact, with the plane going into a side spin, hitting the co-op store and dropping onto the crowd below. 
Five people within the 500 people crowd were killed, with eight injured. The pilot miraculously walked away uninjured. Just opposite this building is Stony Lane, which is the remains of an 18th century wagonway that carried limestone from the quarries to the riverside kilns. Originally it was called Limestone Lane, but it had been shortened over time. Our last history gem is back up the bank at Holy Trinity Church, which has links to Alice in Wonderland. Lewis Carroll's sisters Mary and Elizabeth lived in Southwick, with Mary marrying Reverend Charles Collinwood, who worked at Holy Trinity Church. Whilst visiting here and staying at the rectory, it's thought Lewis got his inspiration for the chess moves in Alice in Wonderland, as well as the walrus and the carpenter. Please give this video a like and a subscribe if you enjoy this video and I'll see you soon.